Hello there guys, welcome back to another Epic and Extra Real Maths video. In this video, we're doing Taylor series once again. We're gonna find the Taylor series expansion of xe to the x, about x equals minus one. And this is gonna be in summation or sigma notation. So we want to write it like this, okay? But specifically for the function xe to the x, and specifically about x equals minus one. And when it says about x equals minus one, this is talking about basically where the function is the best, where it's the most accurate, where you need the least number of terms in order to approximate it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's have a look at getting started with this. So the first thing to do, the first thing that we should always do is write down the function. So f of x in this question is x e to the x. Then we should differentiate this, okay? So the derivative of f of x we're going to have to use the product rule to differentiate this. So differentiating x and then leaving e to the x, we'll have just e to the x. And then plus differentiating e to the x and leaving x, we'll just have x times e to the x because e to the x differentiates to itself. Okay. All right. Let's go again. The second derivative is going to be e to the x plus, and then we have the original function again. So we already know that the original function differentiates to e to the x plus x e to the x. Okay, third derivative, one, two, three. So we have e to the x plus e to the x. And again, we have the same function again, and this differentiates to e to the x plus x e to the x. And maybe you can see a pattern here, okay? So I'm just going to write uh, the, the, these three here in a simplified way and you can see what the pattern is. So this would be one plus x times e to the x. This would be two plus x times e to the x because there's two e to the x's. This would be three plus x times e to the x, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you can see that the nth derivative of x e to the x is n plus x times e to the x. Hopefully that makes sense. Cool, that's the first step to find an expression for it. By the way, if you ever get a question where you don't ask, that it's not asked of you to put it in sigma notation, if you're just asked to find the first three terms, the first four terms, you don't necessarily need to come up with an algebraic expression for it, okay? That's only for if you want the actual, kind of literally to write it as a sum like how we're going to do. Sometimes they're not as nice as this, it's really difficult to come up with the expression. And if that happens, then normally you won't be asked to do it, okay? So if you're struggling to write, if you have, if you have your own question, if you're struggling to write it like this, you might not need to, it depends. Okay, cool. So remember, we need to evaluate all of these derivatives at a. In this question, a is minus one because x is minus one, okay? That's how it works. a is always, wherever you're centered around, that's what a is. So we need to plug in minus one, okay? Cool. So, um, right, we're gonna have, yeah, the nth derivative uh, evaluated at minus one would just be n plus minus one times e to the minus one, like that, because it's n plus x e to the x. Okay, amazing. And then this simplifies to, of course, n minus one over e. That's probably the best way of writing it. Lovely. And then we just plug this into the sigma notation. So we have f of x, which is x e to the x, is the sum from n equals zero to infinity, because by the way, this also works for when f of x is uh, zero. This, this formula that we have, this works including when n is zero, because we can write this as zero plus x e to the x, okay? So it does work for every single term. You gotta make sure that it does, because sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and that's what we have. So we have n minus one over e divided by n factorial times x minus minus one to the n. 
Okay, and we're going to simplify this a little bit more. So we have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, and what can we do right here? Well, let's have a look. We can go n minus 1 over n factorial times e times x plus 1 to the n. And that's probably how I would leave it. And this is x e to the x. And again, as I said in the last video, it's not necessarily true that this, is, this holds for any value of x that you choose, okay? It might only be val uh, valid for a range of values of x. What we will see in the future is how to determine where this is valid. But for now, this is all we need to do, okay? So if you want to know, is this valid for all values of x? You know, which values of x make this thing converge? That's a question for another day. Uh, convergence of power series. But for now, there we are. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I highly appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.